everyone, I'm Ishwari. Solving questions is one of my favorite ways to study. This video focuses on questions on renal physiology. Let's get started. Question number one. Which of the following is associated with calcium phosphate kidney stones? Option A, renal tubular acidosis type 1. Option B, renal tubular acidosis type 2. Option C, renal tubular acidosis type 3. Option D, renal tubular acidosis type 4. The answer to this question is RTA type 1. The main issue with this condition is the inability of the distal tubules to secrete hydrogen ions. Due to this, hydrogen ions build up in the body and cause acidosis. Due to the lack of hydrogen ions in the urine, the pH increases. Alkaline urine predisposes to the formation of calcium phosphate kidney stones. I remember this by the letters O N E in stones. This reminds me that stones are associated with RTA type 1. Question number 2. Diabetes is associated with which of the following? Option A. RTA type 1. Option B. RTA type 2. Option C. RTA type 3. Option D. RTA type 4. The answer to this question is RTA type 4. The mechanism of renal tubular acidosis type 4 is a decrease in the function of aldosterone. This could be brought about by a decrease in aldosterone levels or aldosterone resistance. In the absence of aldosterone, there will be potassium retention by the body which further leads to acidosis. When a patient has diabetes, there is a possibility of developing diabetic nephropathy. This destroys the juxtaglomerular cells of the kidney. The juxtaglomerular cells are the ones that produce renin. Due to this destruction, there is low renin production and hence low aldosterone. This is how diabetes causes renal tubular acidosis type 4. Question number 3. What is the most likely serum chloride levels in a patient with renal tubular acidosis? Option A. High. Option B. Low. Option C. Normal. Option D. Differs. There are two types of metabolic acidosis. Ones with a high anion gap and ones with a normal anion gap. When there is an increase in the anion gap, the chloride ion levels are normal. When there is a normal anion gap, the chloride ion levels will be high. If you look at this equation, it's easier to understand why. When chloride ions are high, the value of anion gap will be low because of the negative sign before this. In renal tubular acidosis, the anion gap is normal, so the chloride levels are likely to be high. Question number 4. Where is the defect in renal tubular acidosis type 1? Option A, proximal tubule. Option B, loop of Henle. Option C, distal tubule. Option D, collecting duct. The defect in renal tubular acidosis type 1 is in the distal tubule. Proximal tubule is associated with renal tubular acidosis type 2. The loop of Henle is not involved in renal tubular acidosis. Renal tubular acidosis type 4 involves the collecting duct. Question number 5. Brain natriuretic peptide is produced by the option A. Cerebrum, option B. Kidney, option C. Heart. Brain natriuretic peptide is produced by the ventricles of the heart. This is secreted when there is fluid overload like in the case of congestive heart failure. Brain natriuretic peptide promotes sodium and fluid loss in order to combat the fluid retention in such conditions. Question number 6. Which of the following is not produced by the kidney? Option A. Prostaglandins. Option B. Dopamine. Option C. Angiotensinogen. Option D. Renin. The answer to this question is angiotensinogen. Angiotensinogen is produced by the liver. It gets converted to angiotensin 1 by the action of renin. Renin is produced by the juxtaglomerular cells of the kidney. The proximal convoluted tubule produces dopamine. The kidney also produces prostaglandins. Question number 7. 
Jogren syndrome causes which type of renal tubular acidosis? Option A, type 1, option B, type 2, option C, type 3, option D, type 4. The answer is renal tubular acidosis type 1. I remember this by the alphabet here. Since the O is pretty unique, it reminds me of 1. Also, it looks like two eyes and a mouth, which reminds me that Jogren syndrome is associated with dry eyes and dry mouth. Question number 8. Why is the pH of urine not high in type 2 renal tubular acidosis, although there is impaired absorption of the bicarbonate ion? In renal tubular acidosis type 2, there is a defect in the absorption of bicarbonate ions by the proximal tubule. So, the urine's pH is supposed to be high, but the alpha intercalated cells of the collecting duct acidify the urine. This, this makes up for the excessive bicarbonate and the pH of the urine is not too high. I hope you guys like this video. If you want me to explain any of these in detail, please let me know in the comments. I will make a video about it. If this was helpful, please give it a thumbs up to show me your support. Thank you.